All right, returning to our animation, uh, I am going to open up my files and, and kind of remind you how to organize them in an ideal world to make it so you don't get confused and make it so you don't uh, give yourself more work than you need and more frustration. So the first thing I'm gonna open up is my storyboard sketch and I'm actually going to open it up just in preview. So I just double click it. I have my assignment five folder. I have my, my master folder already on the desktop. So here is my storyboard sketch. This kind of holds me account accountable. If this were a, a live action feature or a live action spot, a commercial, anything like that, this would be the shooting script. It tells me kind of what I need to set up for, what sets I need to build, what actors I need to hire, what special effects to anticipate. Everything's here in these nine panels. Now I actually need to work on the sound stage. So I'm going to open up my stage file, right? And it is named that way, Carl Assignment 5 stage file. This is the file in Photoshop that is at the, the resolution we want our animation to be at, which is eight inches at the smallest dimension and 150 pixels per inch, which is a very high def screen resolution, but not print resolution. All right. It's more than double what standard screen resolution is, which is 72, but you see it still looks very clear on this. Now, what is the stage? Well, if you take away these different folders, you know, my character Y folder, my, my bug movement folder, what you have is just the setting. And this will um, be where I put all of my movement tests you know, where they start to move. And the stage is also a good place to kind of see what different things are happening. So I haven't done much with this character yet, but I've done a lot with the bug and I have the whole motion cycle for the bug here so I can play through it. So he moves like that. And then I have another bug cycle up here where he moves like this. Now, instead of trying to develop all of those bug movements and all of those assets on this file, I highly recommend just for your sanity that you keep a separate file that is for all of your assets for developing them. And so think of it as the, the treasure box of animation characters and props and special effects. So this is called the assets file, Carl assignment five assets file. It's the same resolution, the same size, but this one, I can play with a lot of these different assets that I'm developing. And where I left off last time, I had developed a jaw movement for my character in my assets. I had developed an eye movement for my character and now I need to work on the tongue. And the tongue's gonna hit the bug. So, how do I go about doing this? Well, I can always refer to my storyboard sketch to see where I am. I am right here, where the character's action is to flick a tongue at the bug, and then the bug gets eaten. So, what assets do I need? What kind of actions do I need my actors or my characters to do to accomplish that? And so then I need to build that. It's like rehearsing with the actors and saying, okay, I want you, it's called blocking. I want you to stand here and I want you to flick your tongue out. And I don't want it to take too long, but I want it to cover a long range. So now I need to build those assets. So what I did was I simply took the tongue and it's on its own layer here and then I duplicated it and I stretched it really far. But the problem is that just doesn't look so believable. So now you sometimes have to work with those assets using your compositing knowledge. So I'm going to make another duplicate of the tongue. I'm going to move it over the top of it. And my goal is without too much effort, you know, making this look more believable. And actually, I think the way to do it would be to warp it from one end. 
instead. So I'm going to, to do it in slow steps. So maybe the tongue reaches out this far first. And notice where its base is going to stay put. Right, so I go from this to this first. And let's see, ideally I'd have this bottom lower jaw turned on so that the tongue would be, oh, no, it needs to be turned off. Okay, good to know. So there we go. Okay, then I can duplicate that again. And let's review some of the fun things we can have with assets. I can now go to, instead of just warp, I could do edit puppet warp. And that will encase the tongue because it's the only thing in that layer in this polygon uh, matrices of warp fields. And I'm going to lock it in place here, here, and here, which allows me then to just tug at the tip of the tongue and do lots of things with it. So I might want to anchor it another place too. This will allow me to curl the tongue, maybe there and there. See, so now, ah, da, 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 da. now it's a little bit more active. Okay, okay next. Going to duplicate that and edit puppet warp again. Lock it, lock it, lock it, stretch it to where I think it needs to go. And I like that it's going to go behind the foreground crystal there on the stage. And I think actually that last one, it can go even further. Let me puppet warp. Now, I could spend a long time, this is where the storyboard comes in, like un unrolling the tongue and doing all kinds of cool things with it. But the problem with that is then it would take a lot of animation frames and that would really slow it down. So use your storyboard to understand how quickly you need actions to happen. So I don't want any more than three movement cycles to get that tongue out of the mouth. Now that I have them all open, I can see that this one needs to be tugged down a little bit. You also have to think of gravity and you have to think of, you know, the muscles of the tongue and the trajectory. And then because I stretched it so much, you can see how the tongue got softened. So I can just quickly go on each one and use a quick filter where I sharpen it a little bit. This just heightens the contrast between edges. But it makes the tongue show up a little bit better. And it wouldn't be great for printing, but it works really well for screen resolution. And because I use Puppet Warp, it's nice how the tongue actually gets thinner as it gets longer as well instead of just growing. So now I have a nice little tongue cycle in my assets folder. And in order to keep them all together, I don't need this one anymore. That's not as good as what I developed, right? Now, I am just going to uh, hold down shift and select all those tongue layers and then click on the folder icon. And I'm going to call this the tongue group. So when I want to cue my actor to use its tongue, these are the assets I will use. All right. Let's see. So now I need another bug group. And so I want to bring my bug groups back on whoops, into my assets. Don't want to be on the crop tool. No, 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 no. Okay. So sometimes you need to, um, 
you just want to have all of your toys in your assets. And so if you develop them on the stage, you want to copy that whole folder, just Command C, and put it back on your assets file. And it's okay if it's not in the right place, because whenever you copy, it's just going to put it kind of central. But what's important about that is that you have a copy of these big movements, right? And then the one I really need is this second bug movement cycle. So I'm going to select it all and copy it. Not select it all, sorry. Uh, just select the whole the whole, whole folder, hit Command C, go to my assets and paste that in. Bug movement two. And the reason I need that is because I need to see where the, the bug movement stops for where the, uh, the tongue contact will happen, right? So if I go to my final frame, that's the last frame where I had the bug. It's right above the little peak of the crystal. And so I see that this has overshot it, which is actually kind of what I wanted but I can go back to the tongue group and say, okay, I know that that final bug, this is where you get characters to interact, ends up around there. It's actually a little bit further. It's like it's about there on my stage. There we go. All right, so now I need to do the finishing of my tongue cycle. And this finishing is going to have the bug integrated into it. So this is where it gets a little complicated. If you want to have different assets interact, you have to build them interacting. And you usually start with animating the thing that's getting reacted upon, right? So I have to start with the bug in order to know how the tongue's going to grab it. So I'm going to make a duplicate of this bug, right? Command J, but I'm going to move it into my tongue group. All right, and then I'm going to make a duplicate of my last tongue. <laughs> I'm going to move it on top of the bug, and then I'm going to puppet warp it. Lock it in place. I like showing it this way because this is actually very much like how 3D animating works with 3D models. So this tongue is going to snap back. And as it snaps back, it's going to catch the bug. In pretty quick movements, right? So I might even need to make it more dramatic than that. So let's see, I lock it in the mouth. But then I can immediately like kind of curl it back. If I want a more dramatic curl, I can give it more anchor points. So this is lashing back. Okay. And then I make another duplicate of the bug. And this time I'm going to mark it purple just so I see that this is the bug I'm animating. This time the bug is going to be animated. And I can puppet warp it if I need to or so, but I'm going to move it to about here, closer to the mouth. Maybe a little bit smaller. I don't need to get all my spatial dynamics exactly right. And then I can puppet warp it if I wanted to, just showing you how you have full control of every pixel 
and you really can do quite a bit 